to Meet the Candidate. I'm Chris Clark, President and CEO of the Queen Creek Chamber of Commerce. Today we're joined by Patty Campbell, candidate for the QCUSD School Board. Welcome, Patty. Thank you, Chris. Appreciate it. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm Patty Campbell, and my husband and I have raised our family in Queen Creek for over 20 years. Both of our kids have attended Queen Creek schools from preschool all the way through Queen Creek High School. And one graduated in 2013 and one in 2020. And during that time, I have volunteered my time through Desert Mountain Elementary PTO president, the middle school, junior high, and ending up at the site council of Queen Creek High School. So lots to be involved in here. So, and I've loved my time. So when our son graduated in 2020, I decided to run for the Queen Creek Unified School District Governing Board. And it has been an amazing journey that I've been on. I love to give back to this community, this town that's given so much to me and my family. So that's quite a decision. How did you come to that, to, to join the school board, and, and what were you hoping to do there? I wanted to better understand how we're getting funded and how we're spending our money um, to students. There are some things that had happened during when my kids were in school that it's different when you're volunteering and you're raising money, which we've done a lot of. And then when you're in turn on a school board and you're the one allocating the money or voting for the money on different measures, it really opens your eyes as to what you're dealing with for the, for the community. And so what are some of the issues that you've seen and, um, and what do you want to hope, what do you hope to accomplish in a second term? Well, the biggest issue I think everybody realizes is that our growth. Our growth, uh, when we came to Queen Creek, uh, we had 4,000 students. Mm -hmm. We're now going to be over 15,000 students. And it's great. I mean, it's a great problem to have for the fact that people want to come to Queen Creek to be able to be educated, which is awesome. But also, um, you know, you're also juggling. We're very lucky um, for the, uh, the funding that we're getting from the state for our school number 10 that's um, going to be built and opened up in 2025, which is wonderful. And that will help alleviate. We've also done construction on four different buildings that we've had of the different schools that we have to help with the growth. So that's great. We've been out here uh, a similar amount of time, about 20 years. So um, one of the interesting things about that, though, is now it's time to start rehabbing some of the buildings as well. Yep. And actually, we are so fiscally, fiscally responsible that um, we are going to be using at Queen Creek Junior High. There's a lot of land out there. That used to be the original, as you know, the original high school that they had out there. That was from everything, from um, elementary to high school. Um, so we are going to use a portion of that to help house our buses. So we're going to use that for the maintenance, the housing, and so forth. That way we don't have to acquire any more properties and it's becoming fiscally responsible within the district as well. Wow, uh, that sounds like quite the undertaking. Yeah, it's quite, this is pretty new. So we're, we were looking for a place because we are just getting squeezed out of where we're at now. We just, you know, have so many buses and the maintenance we have to keep on the buses as well. And so we're gonna use the backside of the, um, the junior high and to be able to house those as well. Yeah, so right now you have the bus barn on Ellsworth, just yep. a little south of the junior high. And then I think you're also um, now grown to across the street as well. Yeah, um, yep. so it's at least close there. together as well. It's not too far away right. from each other. So. Yeah. And so now trying to get them all onto the, to the junior high property. Yeah. Um, tell me about building the schools. How does that work? And do you, are you able to build entirely from school facilities money? Uh, yes, we are. Um, it's actually school number 10, um, and we are going to be using 100% of the state's uh, school facilities funding. Um, we did not have a bond that passed, and then the override didn't pass as well um, last year. So because of our growth, and they go back as far as two years to see what our growth is going to be. The state did realize how bad we need it. And so we are the number one school district, the fastest growing district in the state. So they realized this and that's where we get in our funding for elementary school number 10. But does that pay for the entirety of yes. the school? Yes. Okay. Yes, it does. Um, so it might look a little bit different than what the other schools, um, it might have cement flooring. It might not have, um, in the ceiling, it might have different rafters that we have in that instead of fine tuning. It is, it will be very nice, 
but it might not be the exact same as the other elementary schools that we've had. Right. The school facilities tends to give just enough for... Um, the bare minimum. The bare minimum. Yep, the bare minimum that we have. So we still, you know, we, we still always need funding, absolutely, for our schools. But this is at least to help alleviating in the north section of uh, our district to be able to you know, expand and take the pressure off and the overcrowding that we have in some of the elementary schools that we have in the in that area. So ultimately, it's about keeping the class sizes small. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that also comes if you want to talk about our override that's coming up, um, that will definitely help keep our class sizes small. So uh, that election's coming up for November 5th, and the, our entire school board voted yes. So, and absolutely, I voted yes. That override is going to be helping our special programs with even, first of all, our teacher pay. We need to retain our teachers that we currently have, and we also need to help recruit teachers. You have to be able to be competitive with the surrounding districts to be able to keep um, amazing teachers that we have. The, uh, the other thing that we have in, um, with that is the ROTC program our CTE program, our fine arts, and also reading specialists. It affects everybody. Um, it's not just one work group or one specialized group for students. It affects everybody in the entire district. And that 15% override, whatever is funded with that, that we use that money for, that's what it's gonna be used for. So there's no other extra fluff. We need that to be able to pass. And. Um, typically, it's said that the overrides go directly to the classroom spending bonds or for buildings and, yep. and buses. So, exactly. So and we not are not, yeah, yeah, and we are not going out for a bond this year, um, but definitely the override. So we need to be here to help support our teachers and also to let them know how much we need them as well in our classrooms. And so one caveat to that is when they have to go to um, portable classrooms, those have to be maintained through um, the M&O budget, right, through the override too. So they actually take money away from classrooms. Exactly. Um, so really important to get that override. Yes, um, absolutely. Um, and if it doesn't pass this year, then next year we're okay for 24, 25. But if it doesn't pass this November, you'll start feeling the 5% cut. It's 15%, so over three years, we'll be cutting 5%, 5%, 5% over the three years. So we're really hoping we don't even have to come to that, that it can be passed. I think there's a couple of perceptions out there. Number one, this is a continuation and not something new. Right, correct? correct. Yep, it's the same thing that you've already been paying on currently. And uh, number two, it's not about um, living in within means, it's about being able to afford um, more. Correct. And until we can get funded um, in a different way through the state, this is the best measure that we have. So we, this is the only way that we can keep the programs that we have. So we have a budget, an override is a 15% more, and the, and the programs that we have are based on that 15%. So having the extras like the leadership programs of the junior ROTC and um, for us, the career and technical education, the CTE that you mentioned. That is so valuable. Some people may not know that acronym, but um, um, everything that gets kids ready to go to work. Um, and I think in particular at QCUSD, um, they have uh, quite a few certificate programs. So kids can actually graduate from those CTE programs ready to to get basic jobs. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. So it, it's, it's an amazing program that we have here. So we're hoping that we get to keep it. Um, anything um, that you want to change with curriculum or things like that? You see a lot um, of people up in arms about districts or public education, things well, like that. Well, things that have been brought to us is about CRT. And I want to guarantee everybody that we do not have CRT in our schools. Uh, we do not allow it. And um, so that is just absolutely a no. So I, I know that was a big subject that people have been talking about. Mm -hmm. um, does Queen Creek have that? And I want to assure our families and the students that we do not. So, um, and we always want to better ourselves. Absolutely. Um, you know, Queen Creek 
is an amazing, amazing school district. You know, back in the day, gosh, what, 25 years ago, people used to bus their kids down to Chandler and go to schools and so forth. And Queen Creek has just been doing an amazing job with our education advancements. We're now going to be um, offering dual enrollment um, through ASU. So you can get ASU credits while attending our Queen Creek high schools. So that's an amazing feat that we've had. We have just grown so much. So we just keep pushing for the best education that we can give our kids here. And we're, gonna, we're not going to stop. Well, thank you so much for all of that information and your time. Is there anything that we haven't covered that you um, would like to well, talk about? Well, currently, um, I do want to say that um, my background is I am a flight attendant with, it was America West, then US Air, now American, and I've been doing that for over 40 years. So, and I've been working in bankruptcy hearings and so forth, representing the flight attendants and, um, and I just really enjoy it. I love dealing with people. I love listening to people. I love solving problems. I love listening to our community because of my job. I think I'm very good at that adversity. Um, and so I enjoy it. I also want to say that I am rerunning um, for election. Obviously, that's why I'm here. And I fully support Jen Revolt and Matt Riffey and they serve on the governing board with me right now. Um, we have all done an amazing job and uh, I just, I, I thank you very much for having me here today. Where can people find out more information about your campaign? Um, I have a Facebook and it's Patty Campbell for Queen Creek Unified School District Governing Board. You can find information about that as well. And we also have business cards with a QR code that will go back to that. And, uh, and you can find Jennifer's and Matt's as well. Wonderful. Well, thank you again for being here, Patty. Absolutely. Thank you so much.